My name is Ebony Jones, and I'm at the residence on Greenbelt with Deacon Turner of First Baptist Church of Dangwood. Hi, my name is Ashley Kras. I'm located at the First Baptist Church of Dangwood, and I'm here with Miss Carolyn White Weston. Good morning. My name is Raven Carlson, and today I'll be interviewing Mrs. Burt. Deanwood is one of the oldest consistently African-American communities in Washington, D.C., with residents who have called it home for generations. It is a stable neighborhood with a small town feel located in Ward 7 of the District of Columbia in the far northeast section of the city. It lies along the Watts Branch, D.C.'s longest city park and creek, which feeds into the Anacostia River. Originally populated by the Nacotchtank Indians, the neighborhood takes its name from Mary Dean, the daughter of white landowner Levi Sheriff. After his death in 1853, his land was divided between Mary and his other two daughters. Today, depending on whom you ask, Deanwood has two different boundaries, a triangular area bounded by Eastern Avenue, Kenilworth Avenue, and East Capitol Street, or a rectangular area bounded by the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, now Sheriff Road, Eastern Avenue, Division Avenue, and Nanny Helen Burroughs Avenue, formerly Dean Avenue. Deanwood has been home to several notable people and institutions, including the National Training School for Women and Girls and its founder, Nanny Helen Burroughs. Howard Dilworth Woodson, a renowned engineer and architect in the district, not only lived in Deanwood, but he helped to found many of the neighborhood's civic organizations. Lesser known craftsmen and home builders lived in Deanwood alongside employees of the nearby Benning Racetrack, many of whom migrated from the South to work there. From 1921 until its closure in 1940, Deanwood also housed suburban gardens, the only permanent amusement park located within Washington, D.C., and the only one that served African Americans in the area. Like many neighborhoods in Ward 7, Deanwood's infrastructure suffered from a lack of attention and investment of city resources for many years. However, community leaders and institutions have continued to work to improve neighborhood conditions. Today, these efforts are paying off. Located between two major thoroughfares and near a metro station, the community's detached homes and sprawling lots are attracting the city's attention. New investments are being made, including a $33 million recreation center, library, and indoor pool. What once was a sleeper neighborhood, unknown to many Washingtonians, is now attractive to developers also. With all the positives and negatives that such revitalization efforts have brought to communities like Deanwood all over America, now is a critical time to document and preserve its history. Well, my name is Herbert H. Turner. When and where were you born? I was born in Washington, D.C. How long have you lived in Deanwood? Well, I, I've lived in Deanwood over approximately, well, I'm 89 now and I've been here one. One year, so 88 years in Deanwood. I, uh, Carolyn Wright Wexler. When and where were you born? Uh, Washington, D.C. at Gallagher Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and 
how long have you lived in Dingwood? All my life. <laughs> Myrtle Lee Burton. When and where were you born? North Carolina. And what city? In Salisbury, North Carolina. December 8, 1920. How long have you lived in Dingwood? Uh, since September 5th, 1945. My name is Albert D. Sims. I was born in Franklin County, Georgia. March 16, 1922. Moved here September 28th, 1945. Well, I uh, started uh, at Carver School, which is now, uh, 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 I mean, Demon School, which is now, Car which has changed Carver, and now it's, uh, what's the name of the school? Ideal. Ideal, that's it. Are any of the schools that you went to still standing today? Well, all of the schools are standing. In fact, uh, Starting with uh, Beamwood, it has been large, it's twice as large as it was when I went there. And Brown Junior High is, is larger too, it's made larger. Armstrong is no longer used for, uh, high school is used for adult education. Carver Elementary, uh, Brown Junior High, Spangon Senior High, uh, Federal City College, George Mason University. R and B, <laughs> Otis Redden, and and all those good ones. Yeah, Chuck Berry, Sam Cooke, all of those good people. <laughs> what was the most popular dance? Oh, the hot potatoes. And we were skipping around too. <laughs> People that were working for her had uh, one had went in the army and the other brother couldn't uh, take care of the business, and so they closed the restaurant, which was Park Parkway Cafe in Harmony, North Carolina. And uh, one of the brothers said uh, he was coming to Baltimore to um, get a job in the shipyard. And asked me did I want to ride with him because my mother and my uncle and my sisters and all was up here in uh, Landover, Maryland. And um, I said, yeah, I, I'll ride along with you. There wasn't no jobs around Statesville to get because most of them had closed up. And it was wartime. And uh, I came here and um, started to work with um, one of my dear friends that I went to school with. Uh, George Syed, and um, was working at the Roger Smith Hotel at 18th and Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, and they were working as houseman, and the pay was good. And um, he said, I can get you a job there. And he got me a job, and so after I started working about three weeks, I sent for my wife and my baby, which was uh, born in um, Harmony, North Carolina, in 1942 in, on June the 6th. June 7, 1942, and we um, let her know what was going on and they were to get ready to come. And uh, after I worked about three weeks, we sent for her and her mother to come, and they came, and I've been here ever since. Well, at the time my husband was ill and we came here to see better doctors. But at first, I had worked Bureau of Census. I worked for the Navy uh, Powder Factory at Indian Head, Maryland. I worked for the U.S. Post Office. And I worked uh, at the um, uh, United States Navy um, Annex. And the Annex moved uh, to uh, the Pentagon Building. And I worked there f through 1957 and 58. And um, then I uh, went to, um, in 59, I went to the district government. During the 60s, I went to the district government. And I worked at the district government 
as a, in, the, in the food service department and retired since 77 due to my health. Well, I only really had three jobs since I've been, I think it's three. I worked at Roger Smith Hotel, which is no longer in service at 18th and Pennsylvania Avenue. I worked at the Agricultural Department, and from there I went to St. Elizabeth, and that's where I retired from. Uh, I don't want to call it a company, but it's a company close to school. I worked on their cars uh, quite a bit. They would bring them down to school at Armstrong, and we would work on them, and they would take them back. And then we worked uh, on teachers' cars, superintendent schools and all. We had to replace parts as it went back. I worked at Phelps as a career placement specialist, and then uh, for seven years, I think, seven years over to Phelps. And then they transferred me over to Spingon, and I worked there for about 10 years over to Spingon as a, a career placement specialist. And, um, <clears throat> and I was a substitute teacher as well. When you got this and I got that and so forth, if it wasn't making but 75 cents for washing clothes and ironing clothes for people and uh, things like that, you know. Uh, but uh, you find out now they got machines to do that work. You had to do it with a wash, wa washing tub. Uh, when we came along, they had, had to bring the water, put it in the tub, make the fire around the pot. I bring that pot out there. You know how long that pot is out there in, 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 in the yard? Dr. Robinson, he was a, a midwife, a doctor, a consultant, and everything else in the neighborhood. He was a good doctor. The majority of the children in your neighborhood grow up in two-parent homes? Most of the children had parents, a two-parent home. Okay. In your opinion, does single parenting affect the life of a child? Well, that's something I have to think about because I know of both cases where it worked. I know where it worked and where it hasn't worked. The fact, majority of the families there, the parents had about between seven and ten children. And of course, my mother and father had ten of us. So we were able to communicate with those people, with the other residents in the area. First Baptist Church of Deanwood. And I uh, stayed here for about uh, 15 years, and then I transferred and went to Mount Ephraim Baptist Church. And that's where I am now today. How did religion impact your community? Well, uh, it's not the total community. It, it, it was a, a big impact on me because when we were young, we had to um, we had to go to church and Sunday school, and and I look forward to the kids nowadays to go to Sunday school and to church and get some religion under their belt. Well, I joined church at the age of six. My father was a minister. My mother was the organist of the church. So my seat was on the front row where I had to behave myself. And I stayed in church because they saw to it that I went to church every Sunday. What is your role in the church? Well, right now I'm a deacon in the church. I've been chairman of the deacon board, president of different clubs, and president of senior citizens. 
I worked a lot. I love church work. I attend the United House of Prayer, and I've been there all my life. Uh, neighborhood Crime Watch, and also the Yellow Hat Patrol. I understand that you were the first elected ANC official in the city. What is the ANC, and what did you accomplish in your position? Oh, wow. Well, I told you part of it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Advisory Neighborhood Commission. Uh, we report directly to the district government of any problems that are existing within our community. Um, and between the city council and the mayor, we all were able to um, get things done properly for us in, in the community. Well, I spent a lot of time down in the playground at Demon School because it was just about a block away from my house. And uh, we had many facilities down there, playgrounds, the swings, and the merry-go-rounds, a lot of things we could play with. And uh, as a kid, we used to play down there, and plus we used to play ball quite a bit down there. Okay. Is that still your favorite place in Dangwood? Well, I live all Deanwood. Every, all Deanwood. That's why I stayed there and had no idea of even leaving until recently where I was, had to come in this place. Uh, we had a rec center mm -hmm. and we went down there to play and to communicate with uh, others, you know, other residents. What was the name of the rec center? Um, it was Deanwood Rec Center. Is that still your favorite place to go? Uh, well, they built a new one, mm -hmm. and uh, they just uh, uh, opened it, and it, it's real nice. It's much better because we had an outside pool. Now we got an inside pool. Then we have the computer room. We have the exercise room. We have all of these new entities in, um, in the new uh, center. We had, well, we had curfews for the children. We raised our children, and it was a neighborhood thing of raising your children together. And the parents watched out for more or less the children, regardless of what your family was. Everybody knew everybody, and everybody looked at everybody's children. Well, parents looked out for one another's children when they weren't around, and it made it so much easier because sometimes we we would get into little things we shouldn't do, but someone else would always straighten us out. But there was always somebody you could go to when you have problems, too. And now, best at that time was going to the church. We attended church, and this is one thing that really helped us when we were coming along. It impacted very much because it was a disappointment even though a lot of the people who came in here to Rob was not was not neighbors of Deanwood. But we had such a terrible time here when when that was because I had joined the special police uh, of DC when the routes was going on, you know, and so we were called uh, into special duty and uh, we had to stay on the job uh, without even thinking about coming home. But all that worked out, you know, and so uh, we had a lot of uh, disturbance with when the king was shot, and a whole lot of stuff went on. It's a lot of changes. 
because most of the uh, elderly people, the, the first people to move in the area, I think there's only about three, four families really that I know of live, is still living. Most families died out. Well, the community has changed in as much as a lot of the older people have passed away and uh, different families have moved in, which has changed quite a bit. The people are different and uh, we deal, everything seems to be different now than it was then because of the fact that you're different people. Uh, back in the day when I was uh, a kid, we never had to even knock our doors. We never worried about anybody taking anything from us because everybody loved everybody and not only that, neighbors would watch one another's homes. It has changed a lot because we came up with uh, uh, streets where they weren't streets, they were <laughs> mud piles. Um, and we actually, and it looked like we were in, in, um, in the country. Mm -hmm. So when I became a commissioner, then I had pavement put down, sidewalks installed, um, mailboxes. Um, I did everything I could possibly do to make it look like a resident, and people were very much happy with that. We had a fire department way down on Nichols Avenue, which is Martin Luther King Avenue, and the fire trucks had to come from way over there, over here. The police department, which was old number 11 precinct, was down there, and Annie Costa. And time something happened, and the police get here, it'd be all over with. The fire, a building burning, as Tabernacle Church burned down in 1953, it was burnt down. And I can still hear that bell as it hit down in all that fire. I was standing right in my back door watching that fire. And the fire trucks got here, but, but they had so far to go to, to find the fire hydrant to, to pump water. Walk over to Kenworth Avenue and catch the street off from Kenworth. Or I could just catch the Deanwood bus on Sheriff Road. And I thought it was a good location. And that's why I stayed in the area. All I can say is a wonderful, beautiful place. I've been there for 71 years. And so I, I love it. And I raised all of my children there, my five children. And they were educated in that community. So the Deanwood is a place that I will always, always remember as long as I live. Thank you, Ms. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. And you have a blessed day. And I just enjoy Dean Wood. And um, you've heard the word, I ain't one no whore. I ain't one no whore. I'm going to stay right here. I ain't one no whore. I love uh, the neighborhood. I have a lot of friends here. But I ain't going back. I ain't going back. I'm gonna stay right here and uh, the rest of my days and keep the friends that know me and know my condition that when I'm out there, they'll help me. Thank you, Mrs. Hanson. Thank you, God bless you. Mm-hmm.